Hello my dear friends, this is a painter cat. My name is Catherine. Today we're gonna paint with watercolor. You can use a uh, pause and uh, you can see what materials uh, I use today and recommend for you if you want to follow this tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna paint with watercolor and it's a blue rock bind wind. Really adorable, simple looking flowers but it's have so many interesting details and uh, let's see how the process going. This tutorial it's a short one demonstration version. If you want to paint with me in the real time with detailed instructions about colors, uh, techniques, about common mistakes and how to avoid it, Follow links down below in a description. There you can find a real-time tutorial. It's kind of long. It's going for two hours, and step by step, together we will create this composition. So let's see main steps here. Let's talk about the most important moments. First, I recommend to go uh, wet on wet. But before you will start, you have to plan well those spots where you're gonna have centers of each flowers. Because here we're gonna have a gradient color from yellow to red and to the blue. Colors I used, you can see them on the left. There I put a color chart and uh, also the final result. It doesn't matter if colors spreading further than you expected, it's still wet uh, in web technique. Just follow this gradient. For me, it's uh, overall in, uh, in the center. Next, it's metallic red and uh, geranium red. Colors looking still red, but not similar to each other. And as a main color, as a leading color here for flowers, uh, I choose azure blue. Sometimes azure, you know, it's very intensive shade, isn't it? Sometimes it can look a bit boring if it's uh, used too much in a painting. So I'm gonna mix it with violet later and violet I will put mostly in the shadows. Around flowers, mm, let's put some green spots. Imagine it's a garden behind, or maybe a forest. Green and pink spots, or maybe blue spots, all mixed together, wet and wet, very soft without any sharp borders. Uh, and uh, it will look later as unfocused background. Next step. I already created a sketch traceable, it's easy to use, you can print it and uh, transfer on a background we already prepared. You can find short tutorial about it on my uh, channel, it's free, it's open to everyone. Uh, same way you can use for your own sketches. For transferring I'm using a pencil graphite on the back side. So this way, no any ink, nothing, it's just a graphite and if some lines will be visible in the end, it can be removed with just a um, rubber. And the next step, it's a big one, it will take time, so prepare yourself. Uh, here are five flowers and each flower have five petals, lots of sharp edges. Imagine one petal, white, put blue with a smaller brush and with a second brush, clear, with just a clear water, blend color inside of the petal. This way you will have very soft looking petal inside, but this one have a really nice sharp edge. One by one. Petal by petal, we will detail them all. In the center of each petal, I will uh, leave 
a tiny, really thin line because later I will cover it, I will fill it with a geranium rod. Uh, this sort of flowers uh, can have a different colors, but uh, today I will create, I believe, most uh, common. It's a blue one with a central pink vein. Detailing going with just a single color, which is azure blue, and uh, it just don't need to clear a brush with a color all the time. Just go with one color all the way, everywhere. But blend colors really well. Inside of the petal area, there is no any sharp lines. Blend it, spread it. And I'd say enjoy the process. It's a kind of meditative and uh, even if we're spending time for it, it's a lot of pleasure. I put some water, but only in a waterline of single petal and just a giving color into it. Color will not to spread everywhere, it will go, it will float only on an area with the water and the wet. So this way you can control your watercolor really, really nice. Let's go next. See, blue not going on a background, on a green background. It's spreading only on a wet area inside of the flower. Don't spread it too deep, too far in the center of your flowers. Keep those yellow and a pink without any touch of blue. Uh, don't care right now about values. Just create detailed petals. Values, shadows, we will add later with a glazing. Glazing, it's a simple technique, by the way, I have many questions about it, and uh, I'd say most common, it's how not to lift up previous layers with a top glazing, right? I'd say just use a really good quality paper. Uh, it's mean paper locking colors inside. Well, all you have to do, dry your watercolor really good. I'm usually use a hairdryer and this way top glazing will go smooth and will not lift any colors under it. Let me demonstrate right now. I will complete a second flower, just detailing here again. If before I used two brushes and I switched it, it's taking more time but giving more control. Uh, it's also possible to detail just with a single brush. Look, I have just a one brush. I put color with it, but same time I'm spreading color after. This time you have to clean your brush after you bring some color on your paper. Bring blue, clean brush. Uh, dry it with a napkin in your left hand and this way after you're able to spread color better. This process with a single brush going faster but need a bit more experience. And look, there is a glazing. I just put it line, blue line, color on top of a previous one. But look, all details still visible, still staying visible under it. But again, be careful, glazing going good only on a previously dried layers. That's important, right? Third flower going, color still 
just azure blue and uh, today I put it palette on top of my painting. That's good for you. You can see uh, what colors I use. But of course I do not recommend to you to put palette on top of your uh, paper. Because sometimes some accidental spots, drops can be dropped on your paper and uh, Honestly, not all the time I can notice them and remove in time with a napkin. And uh, also to pigment that drops, it's just hard to remove. But again, for demonstration process, I believe it's helping to you to see colors I use. Today, for this tutorial, I recommend not to mix too much, but use a really clear colors as you have from the tubes. Next step, all blue flowers already here and next it's a central vein with a geranium red in each flower. Don't spread it too deep into the center because yellow small center have to stay shiny and light yellow. Again, blend it well, blend it without any visible borders. Each petal have one pink line in the center. And I'm just spreading it a little bit, helping to myself with a second brush, with a bigger brush, because big brushes usually blending better than smalls. It's just not possible to blend with a brush number 0 or 1. Yes, it's controlling a shape better, it's able to create some tiny details, which is nice to look, but it's not for blending. Big brushes blending perfectly. Let's Put some pink here and blend a bit. If you have no geranium red, you can go for just a simple red or just with a mile-like red. Same with yellow hair. If you have uh, uh, no aurelin, you can use uh, cadmium lemon or cadmium yellow medium, but be careful with it. Uh, cadmiums have a white base, so this is watercolor with a coverage. Just be sure you use it very, very uh, with a thin layer. Aurelian uh, yellow, it's a transparent yellow, it's very shiny. Next big step here, it's a green pots, it's some stems. What shades of green you prefer? As for me, I'd say it's a sad green. I'm using it a lot. I just like how it's looking. Look, looking deep but gentle same time. Layering well, transparent enough. Just a perfect green. Another green I use here and uh, this shade is new for me. It's a May green. Almost neon. So fresh. I'd say even have some spring mood in this shade. Uh, I love it and uh, probably in the future I will use it more. Just paint with those combinations that you prefer. For me here it's a uh, uh, sub-green and may green, but you can uh, replace any colors if you haven't on your palette, just uh, pick those that are the closest to mine. I also like a uh, combination of green and uh, cadmium orange. Mm, probably you already noticed it uh, from my previous tutorials. I just don't know why. I like to put a tiny amount of uh, cadmium orange, tiny touch. For example, here, on the tip of the leaf. And in my view, a leaf's looking more alive, because only plastic leaves can have green everywhere. 
uh, real leaves usually have maybe some tiny spots, uh, some area or um, patch can be dry a little bit. But I don't like idea to use a brown. Instead of a tiny touch of uh, cadmium orange, just looking uh, interesting and uh, fresh. Stems here, kind of thick, what do you think? But same time, these flowers also not that small. In real, they are tiny. So as soon as we going for big size of flowers, stems, also have to be bigger a little bit than in a reel. Let's create some leaves as well. They are fresh, they are light, not too dark. And let's paint another one here. Something like this, not too big. Don't forget about a pointy tip for this leaf and just spread colors nicely. Let's bring some interesting detail here. What do you think? For example, a tiny spiral. Be careful. Just go with a pointy tip of your brush and it's done. Let's continue this stem. Just imagine it's a line, solid line. It's just going behind a flower. But in your mind, try to imagine this stem as a single, as a one. Next interesting detail here. It's a twisting stems. One twisting around another. It's not complicated, at least not that complicated as it's looking. Uh, let's go steps, right? First, look. Uh, paint curved line. Those stems that twisting around. Go for a light color first, but put sub green at start and in the end, each part like this. Let it dry, that's important. Let it dry very well, return to it, to this area, and now you will be able to fill with a color central stem, straight stem, and go with a darker color, with a sub-green. This way, in the end, you'll get a vision and effect like one stem twisting around another. I want to warn you, uh, don't go for all stems, both of them, twisted one and a straight one in one go. This way, different areas will be mixed all together without any sharp edges between them and you will probably lose a fact of twisting. See? It's really going not that complicate as it looking. Just let different areas be dry. As soon as all greens done, we can check some tiny areas and parts and fix them. For example, here I feel like I need to add more violet shadow for this bar. And same time Let's bring violet shadows to other flowers. I told you, don't care too much about values from the start when you was creating details because shadows we will create later with a glazing. How it's going? Take a look. Pick violet, just a clear violet shade. Put it there where you want to create a shadow part. Imagine these petals on the bottom part of the flower, they are more curved. So just put a shadow and blend it with a clear brush. Just blend it softly. 
This way you can correct shapes better. I put a sport, dog sport, and blend it. Let's repeat it again. Shadow and blend it. Not only soft shadows, we can create sometimes petals have more sharp looking holes. This way, just do not blend it. You can create sharp line and leave it like this. If it's looking too dark, it's possible to lift a bit of watercolor with just a clear napkin. And right now, this flower have more value. When you're happy with your flowers, let's bring some stems. Let me demonstrate to you a difference between watercolors and a gouache. Uh, we have, for example, a cadmium lemon. It's a thick enough and some stems can be added with it. But it's looking not too contrasted, isn't it? Look, it's not visible at all. Red under it, really too dark. Then let's see what about white uh, watercolor. More visible. Let's try here. Yes, looking more contrasted. But for me, gouache, white gouache, working the best. So I can recommend for you to use gouache for final detailization. Take a look. It's really looking very thick, but still, after drying, it uh, will stay matte and looking nicely with watercolor. So yeah, if you like to work with this material, you like to paint with it, just get some white gouache and trust me, you will be surprised how nice these two, watercolor and gouache, working together. In the end, let's sign it! When you're choosing a color for your sign, remember, it still will be placed on top, so your color have to look nice with the whole painting. I used just sap green. I will dry my painting right now, it's done. My friends, thank you for joining me today. If you enjoy the process and you like how it's turned, subscribe my channel. Uh, we will have more interesting ideas and uh, I'll be happy to see some likes under this video. Also, welcome on my Patreon for real-time tutorials and I'll be truly happy to see your paintings follow my tutorials. If you share it to me through Instagram, Remember, hashtag PaintyCat. I'll catch you later. It was a PaintyCat. Bye-bye.